My name is Melissa Harlow, and I am the Children, Youth, and Family Outreach Minister at Samuel United Church of Christ in St. Louis, Missouri. I'd like to start off with a story about a bag of chips. Actually, this is not just any bag of chips. It is a bag of flaming hot Cheetos. Is your mouth watering? Now I can throw down on a bag of flaming hot Cheetos like it is nobody's business. So when Cindy Berkner asked me to do a reflection on finding God in the ordinary, I immediately thought of a bag of flaming hot Cheetos. So I'd like to take you back to the summer of 2007. I was working at the Christian Activity Center in East St. Louis, Illinois. The CAC, or the center, as anyone who's ever been there lovingly calls it, is an after-school center for kids that has all these wonderful offerings for the youth in the community. They have tutoring, a music studio, art classes, taekwondo, basketball, a community garden, language classes. This list goes on and on. And I would highly recommend you stop by for a visit and give them all of your time and money. But what I want to talk about today is of all those wonderful things, I want to talk about the vending machine. I used to frequent that vending machine in the multi-purpose space, it's called the big room. Seven years of vending machine I put to good use. But on this specific day that comes to mind, I didn't have any change. And this was back before vending machines were fancy and you could hold up your phone and then it would do some weird technology thing to make all that good stuff pop out. No, 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 no. So when one of the kiddos I worked with, we'll call him Trayvon, knew I hadn't gotten my daily vending machine snack, he marched up to me on the playground later that day with a bright, shiny red, yellow, and orange bag of flaming hot Cheetos hiding behind his back. Melissa, I know you love that vending machine in the big room. Geez, Trayvon, why are you trying to call me out for how much snacking I do? He said, I know you love those flaming hot Cheetos. Yeah, they're my first go-to item, but not today. And then he whips them out from behind his back. Then I know you're gonna love this. I bought you some. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. Thank you. I, I love this, but I cannot accept this. So let's pause the story right there. I'm going to give you a little context. The Christian Activity Center is housed in the Samuel L. Gumpers Housing Projects, which when I worked there, many residents lived more than 60% below the poverty level. And there were many single mothers working multiple jobs to make ends meet on that block. Trayvon and his little sister came to the center every day. And this day so happened to be Trayvon's eighth birthday. He moseyed up to the center that morning with a dollar bill and a swagger that only an eight-year-old birthday boy could pull off. And he showed everyone that dollar he had gotten for his birthday. This was a great deal of money to that eight-year-old. I don't wanna make any assumptions, but I got the impression that was the only thing Trayvon might be getting for his birthday this year. He held on to it all day long. He showed it to everyone. I saw that dollar bill flashed around the center so many times that a staff had to start saying, Trayvon, put it away or you're gonna lose it. So when he came up to me and gave me that bag of flaming hot Cheetos that he bought from the vending machine in the big room, and I realized what he had spent that dollar on, I knew I could not take the fruits of his birthday present. But as I started to balk and I could see the light in his eyes dim as I tried to refuse those chips, my coworker who saw what was happening leaned over and said, you better take those chips and you better eat them. A great gift has been given. I remember feeling this moment of communion. Take, eat, and remember. 
and my coworker was right. A great gift had been given. More than a bag of chips, an everyday item that cost 75 cents. A sacrifice had been made in joy for someone who had already been given so much. Trayvon's actions changed me that day. I had experienced the gift of sharing in this community many times before, but this time I really recognized the value, the joy, the sacrifice in it. You know, I hesitate to tell these stories about the kids I worked with there because they're not just my stories and I don't want anyone to ever feel exploited by it, but Trayvon is a grown man now with a wife and a new baby. And he knows what that moment meant to me. You know, I asked him years later, do you remember doing that? And he said, of course. I said, that was a big deal to me. He said, I know. I am thankful. I am thankful for these ordinary moments that are the root of extraordinary change. This also makes me think of this past week and the mission trip our youth group went on. We kept it local and did a slew of projects at Room at the Inn, a local shelter over in Bridgeton in St. Louis that provides housing with a purpose for women and children. Now, before the pandemic, Room at the Inn would send these families to sleep at different churches each night. Maybe some of you have hosted this in the past, but because of the pandemic, they switched to sheltering in place, and the building has transformed over the past year to help better facilitate that. Stop by Room at the Inn and give them all your time and money, too. So during our work week, I kept going back to this idea of God in the seen and unseen moments. There are these grand moments that we might find it easy to find God in the birth of a child, a wedding, a funeral, at church. We go to church basically saying, I want to go experience God today. I'm going to make some time to go do that. And I was feeling like that with our project, that there is this scene work that is done. We painted a room. It was white. Now it is newly white with an aqua blue accent wall. It's super cute and calming. We laid carpet. It was tile. Now it is plush. It looks great against that blue wall. We flipped an office space into a teen lounge. The work was important and it was necessary and it was asked for. And there was this clear before and after picture of the work. And seeing the work of God's people in such tangible ways, it was life-giving. Tasks like those don't feel mundane or everyday. Of course, it's not ordinary. We disrupted a whole week of our lives to do something out of the ordinary. We prayed and we planned for this disruption. And it might have seemed easier to see God's hand in those tasks. But then I began thinking on these unseen moments the tasks that don't look any different from an outside perspective, the everyday tasks, our youth that played with children at Room at the Inn so their moms could take a break or go to work or work on a resume, that time can go unseen. Or I think of our fourth grader, John, one of the few younger kids that came to help that week. While everyone else was doing what some might label the fun jobs, the painting, landscaping, Jenga with kids. I'm not saying I would label them fun, but some might in this hierarchy of mission trip work say that those are the fun jobs. Now, Jenga increases my anxiety. It's like that perfection game where there's this time limit and you're trying to put the pieces in the spots and then it pops and scares you. And we all have different definitions of fun, but I digress. Okay. So John volunteered to clean, an ordinary, thankless task. And this particular cleaning job had no satisfying before or after because of what John was cleaning. Our room at the end coordinator, Melanie, who is an incredible woman, 
gave John the task of cleaning behind a space that holds all the client's possessions. These are basically small cages that would store maybe a family of four's valuables. John, with a little help from his mom, pulled all these cages from out against the wall and cleaned behind them. Years of gunk and grime, random things that had fallen behind, treasures lost, covered in old spills and dirt. You may be thinking of your own hard to get unseen spaces at home that collect its own mess, behind the stove, under the refrigerator, a closet in the basement. While John swept, he scrubbed. He scrubbed again, and he scrubbed again, and he scrubbed one more time, and when he was done, he pushed those cages back against the wall, and it looked like he was never there. Nobody would have known that that work was done. An everyday task. But I knew John was there. And it meant something to me. It made me think about what it might feel like to have all my valuables fit into one cage. And then for that cage of valuables to be sitting on top of a floor that had seen many other families' belongings come and go over the years. Nobody would know what the transitions of mothers ready for a new start could leave behind. But John now knew. He knew that to have all your valuables in the world stored on top of a freshly scrubbed, swept and scented floor meant something. John performed a God-sized ordinary act that day. Alongside a building full of Samuel youth and room at the end clients doing the exact same thing. So much can be seen if only we choose to look. Something that is ordinary can become extraordinary if only we let it. You know, I'd like to imagine that if I had all my valuables locked in that cage on a cleanly scrubbed floor, and you looked inside to see something I held on to most. You just might find a bag of flaming hot Cheetos. Amen. <laughs>